users prefer to browse, read, and buy from fast websites. And as website owners, we're responsible for providing that experience. Of course, that's easier said than done. There are lots of tools, techniques, and technical jargon to learn, especially if you're just starting out. That's why in this series, we'll break down the most common page speed issues. We'll also go over proven optimization strategies and ways to implement them. Let's start at the beginning. Page speed is a term used to describe how fast a web page loads. Terms like web performance and site speed are also used to describe the same thing, although the latter refers to the load time of a collection of pages. Understanding web performance can be tricky, since we have to take into account a few different moments. The first one is the time it takes for the server to send data to the browser. If this step takes too long, everything after takes a hit. Next, we need to understand how fast the browser renders a page on client devices. Lastly, it's also important to track how quickly a page becomes interactive. Some popular tools for measuring these moments are Google's PageSpeed Insights, GT Metrics, and Web Page Test. If you've tried any of them, you've probably seen metrics that measure various aspects of page speed. Here's a quick summary of the most important ones. Time to first byte refers to the time between the browser's request and the moment it receives the first byte of data from the server. Again, it's crucial to keep this period short. First Contentful Paint, or FCP, occurs when the browser first renders content on the screen. FCP shows the user that a page is actually loading. Largest Contentful Paint, or LCP, tracks when the largest above the fold element appears on screen. LCP plays a role in Google's ranking algorithm as part of their page experience signals. First Input Delay, or FID, measures the delay between a user's first interaction and the browser being able to respond. This metric is also part of Google's page experience signals. There are also other performance metrics, but these four are a great starting point for understanding how people experience your site. This brings us to another crucial topic, the types of data used in speed testing tools. Google's PageSpeed Insights uses both field and lab data. Field metrics should be your primary concerns since they reflect the actual user experience. Field data, also known as Real User Monitoring, or RUM, is gathered from real users by the Chrome User Experience Report, or CRUX. The performance data you see in Google Search Console also comes from real users. On the other hand, lab data is collected on a predetermined device and network settings. While useful for debugging, this data doesn't represent your visitor's experience since the publicly available lab testing tools don't know how to meaningfully interact with your site and measure the output. For example, say you have a CTA button that starts playing a video in a pop-up. It is important that this button accepts user interaction and processes it fast. Lab data can't tell you if that's the case, but field data can. That's why it's best not to rely solely on lab metrics as a measure for your site's performance. We'll wrap up the first episode of PageSpeed 101 here. In the next one, we'll take a closer look at each of the three PageSpeed moments we mentioned earlier, discussing common problems and optimization strategies. Stay tuned.